This is a HeadGum Podcast. Greetings, Nadpoles. It is I, the Breakfast Wizard, here to talk to you about Magic Spoon, the sacred artifact I use to cast my serial mancy spells. After years of... Oh, what's that? Ah, oh, it turns out this is an ad for Magic Spoon the Serial, not by spellcasting focus. As such, I'm going to let Caldwell take over. Ta-ta! Hey gang, Caldwell here. Sorry about that. Real quick, here is what you need to know. Birthday cake flavor is back. That's right, this limited edition cereal was so popular that Magic Spoon brought it back, and now you can get it for yourself. For a limited time, Magic Spoon is offering a free box of birthday cake cereal with every purchase, including subscriptions. This cereal is normally $10, so this gift with purchase is a great deal. To take advantage of this offer, head to magicspoon.com slash pawpawbday to grab a custom bundle of cereal and get a free box of birthday cake and try the magic for yourself. Remember, this exclusive offer is only available to NADPOD listeners. So go to magicspoon.com slash pawpawbday to add a free box of birthday cake to any order. Magic Spoon is so confident in their product, it is backed with a 100% happiness guarantee. So if you don't like it for any reason, they will refund your money, no questions asked. Okay, the Breakfast Wizard is still loose in my house somewhere, so I have to go. Thanks for listening, and see you next time. Welcome to the campaign after the campaign. This is not another D&D podcast. Welcome back to Bahumia, everyone. Bahumia. I'm your dungeon master, Brian Murphy, joined by Jake Hurwitz. Hard one, sure foot. Emily Axford. Moonshine Sabin, here to have fun, get some, and roll ones. Oh, please <laughs> don't. Don't. Moonshine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs> It'll happen. Sometimes you fall in a hole. <laughs> and of course, Caldwell Tanner. Beverly Togold, the fifth rider of the husk brother of the dusk Mm. Mm. thank you mommy oh yeah guys let's do a little recap so last week you guys raced to the seventh circle of hell to save balnor there you found three descending rings of violence and came across all manner of nefarious folk some familiar some new one of the latter was a reanimated god husk that dominated the lesser monsters attacking people at random and pursuing them until they were dead or someone else caught their rage. While Beverly rushed to help Balnor fight off his old rival Zalek, Hard One was attacked by the god and nearly killed. Moonshine was able to pull his attention with a lightning bolt only to be knocked out herself. Hard One then returned the favor and saved her by throwing his lightning javelin at the (laughs) god, then tricking it into thinking the knoll Deep Rag had done it instead. As the god attacked Deep Rag, you were able to rejoin Bev and defeat the rest of the hounds. You then descended to the lowest platform, battling an onslaught of acid rain as you searched through burning sand for a way out. Moonshine eventually found one. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> and then we won hell yeah right? and then, that's uh, what i remember yeah, yeah we, you were dispensed out of a giant um yeah. prize machine yeah yep. and you came out in a big chucky e. and then i a big version of me got the prize yeah <laughs> emily found a glitch in the code and we clipped right to the ninth level it's amazing hell that's right yeah. uh, this one is called uh kill screen was the name of that <laughs> one. Oh, oh. uh but uh, no moonshine plummeted through uh the false floor and disappeared into a hole in the sand and that's where we are now so moonshine you are plummeting through this narrow tunnel plunging into the abyss below you still have an action you only used your bonus action to find this pit what do i see below me uh just abyss for now then i think i'm just gonna let myself keep falling okay So, Moonshine, you continue following through this narrow chute, passing thousands of tiny creatures as they skitter through the earth, lining the walls. (laughs) Uh, High bitching back at you. Um, You pick up speed until you are shot out of the seventh circle of hell into the eighth layer, which um, I would assume Bev already gave you guys a full PowerPoint. uh, Yeah, Yeah. you guys got a full PowerPoint. Um, This is fraud. You are shot out. Into a black sky. It can is. I can I take a second to um, make a joke to um, Pendergreens and be like, "Hey, Pendergreens, you're home." 
<laughs> what? I don't get it. Because <laughs> you're a fraud. Oh, you're afraid to confirm me. Do you watch the roast battle with Jeff Ross? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> No, but I'm going to guess you do. <laughs> Ross goes in on those people, man. <laughs> Anyways, just try to keep it light because I yeah. think that we might die. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't realize. Sorry, I had I'm really loud. He was... <laughs> you know what? Like, yeah, I think wait, the oxygen mask didn't fall. Yeah. In the belly chain. <laughs> oh, oh, wait. Well, <laughs> yeah, right. I was supposed to put it on my shelf before I put it over the TV and try to make sure Ross is okay. <laughs> he's got Jim Norton on there. <laughs> They're going at each other. Oh, he tells it like it is. <laughs> uh, so you guys um, are falling through uh, the sky. Moonshine. You see that the sky is pitch black, that there are no stars, no moon. Um, but below you... You can see rubble of what looks like an ancient city. The ruins glow with a white light as if it were reflecting moonlight, but there is no moon. Um, You see rubble, great pillars reduced to jagged rocks, torn down statues and such. But to you right now, you're just falling at a high speed. Um, You're about to hit the ground for max damage. What do you do? I wild shape into a bird. Okay, wild shape into a bird. <laughs> As a bird, can I use my wing? So I'm a bird, right? So I could like, I'll have a really good sense of what would make a good nest. Can I real quick <laughs> put together like a little nest for people to fall into? <laughs> like a big bird nest? <laughs> you start grabbing sticks and making a nest. <laughs> you fucking maniac. <laughs> Moonshine, go ahead and give me a perception check. 25. She's going to find some good sticks. <laughs> Moonshine, you see a strange creature. Other than this creature that you see fly up into the sky, you see nothing else. You do not hear a peep here. Weirdly quiet. But um, with that good of a perception check, you can see that this looks like a manticore. Uh, it has a lion's oh. body with a big, strange, human-like face, then dragon wings, and a big scorpion stinger. And as soon as you um, land and kind of perch and start building this nest and look out, um, you see it takes off into the sky, starts flying towards you, but disappears into like the black of the night. I'm building this nest for you. (laughs) You hear a voice speak back to you. Oh, well, that's so nice. Aren't you so sweet? Yeah. Yeah, I am. What's your name? My name's Moonshine. My name's Paris. Paris, I'm building you a nest. Tell me, what's your favorite kind of stick? Because I'm going to make sure I get a lot of it. I like every stick. Every stick? You like them knobby or you like them straight? How crooked you want them sticks? I like every stick. Okay, because I tend towards crooked, so I'm going to favor the crooked. Then we're going to cut back up. We are still in initiative. Um, We're going to cut up to Beverly, who's still on the uh, seventh layer of hell with hard one and Uh Balmore, just like as Moonshine talks to this weird creature, just like screaming over acid rain, I'm getting eaten alive here, man. (laughs) Balnor's on like death's door. (laughs) That's your turn. It's okay. I'm sure Moonshine is doing something very useful to help us all. (laughs) It was good to know you, brother. I didn't have any action left. For the record, I used my action to turn into wild shape. I used my bonus action for the perception. I have a fucking I, nest to fall into. Yeah, I'm never going to complain about you turning into a bird. That's the dope <laughs> shit, and I'm here for it. Bev, make a deck save. Okay. And a um. now that those guys are off the shield, you can use it to block the rain. Oh, great. Cool. Um, You know what? I will say flat out, you can use it to block the rain. You don't need to oh, take any damage. Red. You hold it over your head. You have a magic shield. Ping, 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 But uh, go ahead and roll a con save we for the sand. should have done that from the <laughs> beginning. <laughs> I thought the sand would be more dangerous. <laughs> 11? Uh, that fails. You take 20 uh, damage okay. from the uh, sand. Uh, but you do see that there is now a hole here. Yeah, we the found middle. the hole. You found the hole. Found the hole! Okay, so if I'm if I'm able to feather fall, uh, then I will do that. Sweet. I will uh, jam a javelin into the wall and attach a rope to it, just in case Balnor needs a little extra help. Yeah, you use your action to do that, and um, then you jump down. I jump. I'm just kind of chilling and falling. Uh, do I see this manticore? Um, yeah. You fly all the way down, and um, you land in the level of fraud. You land next to Moonshine the bird. Actually, you just see a bird talking to a really nice manticore. But I huh. told you whenever I whenever I wild shape into an animal, I have a little badge I wear so they know it's a wild shape Moonshine. 
Uh, uh, you see the badge. Do I notice that the bird is with egg? Uh, yeah. Okay. You see it's full of eggs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, Moonshine. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> oh, Manticore. Yeah. Ah, nice to meet you. Oh, hi there. Hi, my name's Paris. Hello, uh, Beverly Togold, the fifth. How are you? I'm doing so well. I'm always doing well. I'm always happy to have new guests here. Paris, I'm doing a little home renovation for Paris. Oh, nice. Yeah. Uh, that is back up to Balnor's turn. Um, Balnor is almost dead. <laughs> Balnor is going to make a uh, con save, and he passes. Oof. He makes a... Dex save and he fails, but he's gonna try Indomitable, try to get out of it. He fails. Oh, <laughs> hard one. You see, Balnor collapses and is just getting eaten alive by this acid and by the sand. Yep, that tracks. <laughs> um, that is your turn, hard one. Okay, I'm gonna uh, start of your turn. Dex save. Right. I think I'm gonna use my second and final Indomitable to try to beat. I don't. A sixteen is does not save, right? No. Okay. Nineteen passes. So Whew. you just take ten from the rain. Now go ahead and give me a con save. Twenty-two. You just take eight. You all right? <laughs> yeah. Did you guys get Barely. that? I did like the mass cure wounds. Oh, yeah, yeah, but everybody's okay. taking like yeah, fifty damage just, around. Okay, okay. Yeah. I, the only reason I have not died is because of all your heals. Um, okay. So I have. Very little HP. I'm gonna kiss my ring of feather fall, wrap Balnor up in the cloak, in my cloak, and uh, just dive through. You dive through with Balnor. It's gonna be a little extra weight, so you guys are going to hit the ground for a little bit of damage. Yeah, I imagine I'll just hit the ground and die in this beautiful <laughs> nest. You yeah, guys see <laughs> Balnor and Hard One. <laughs> 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 Crash into the ground, 25 damage. I'm down. <laughs> um, oh no! Hard one. Your in- sticks. Instantly goes down. You see, Balnor. <laughs> Why did everyone nothing? miss Balnor, the nest? <laughs> Balnor instantly fails a death save. It's oh, all, all like twisted and fucked up on the ground. They're both just seizing there on the ground. Um, Moonshine, that's your turn. All okay. right, one trick pony coming in with another mask your wounds. <laughs> Don't hate it. That will never get old. Yeah. 28 for everyone. Woo! Oh. That's zesty. Wow. Look at this. And I, I also heal the manticore for 28. <laughs> this beautiful wow. bird. I must be in heaven. <laughs> I'm not lying. I do. Thank you so much. Yeah, you see? Paris, I'm looking after you. I'm a bit of a healer. You get in business with me, you'll find that out. Oh, I love you. I'm so happy to have you here. I love you. Uh, you see? Yeah, it's super unsettling. This manticore <laughs> has an extremely handsome face. Um, this man with strong features a great head of hair and dimples, mouth set in a permanent smile. Dimples now, and wimples. Who are your friends here? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I was being rude. Um, let me introduce everyone. This is Hard One Surefoot. Elias Stormborn. Yeah, okay, Elias Stormborn. Never know what he likes to be called these days. <laughs> I like to change it up. Balnor the Brave. Hey, I've had a rough day. <laughs> it's and been a- uh, Young Bev. Also had a rough day. Nice to meet you. Oh, and formally. of course, Papa. Meow. <laughs> Oh, well, isn't he just the cutest little thing? Yeah, you can pet him if you want. Right, Papa? <laughs> Before the manticore goes to pet Papa, I I kind of like walk between them. So what brings you to this level of hell? I kind of like dart eyes back to moonshine. <laughs> yeah, that's right. How'd they get you down here? Oh, I got to imagine every afterlife was courting you. <laughs> oh, it's no big deal at all. Uh, suddenly you see his head does a full 180 degree turn and you see that on the other side uh is another face uh this one looks like a contorted version of the handsome man his skin is gray uh uh, paris's uh, delicate features now look severe he's got like a super thick brow big underbite and fangs and he goes I am Gorth. I tell brutal truths, and Paris tells sweet lies. And then you see he turns back to Paris. Oh, no, that's not true at all. I just like having everybody here. I just trust this face more, you know? <laughs> right. I honestly I felt a kinship with Gorth. 
<laughs> yes, that's right. This half elf that couldn't possibly be as big as a human that did as much of a work right, that did the same like workout. Send Paris back, you fucking liar. <laughs> <laughs> Turns back. That's right. He's lying about everything. I was yeah. noticing that my my pinky ring only fits on my middle finger now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Devastating. That's, that's probably because the ring got bigger. That's they what I was rings thinking. rings stretch out. Yeah. Rings don't do that. <laughs> but they do do that sometimes. But like a finger swell up and down based on temperature and that's climate. That's true, too. That's yeah. true. I suppose she's got me on that one. <laughs> that's right, Gorth. I don't think it does that. <laughs> no. Not it's, enough. You, know, you guys just can't know. agree on anything. Beverly looks like uh, in the fur of the mane for like another face that's just normal. <laughs> We're all weird. We're not weird at all. Oh, you're a little mm. weird. We're not even a little bit weird. We're super normal. We're super weird. Y'all have the same taste in food. We're I super grab, weird. I and grab we're a Ritz up. bits. I grab a Ritz <laughs> bits from Beverly's pocket to see which of them eats it. Paris looks at it and goes, "I love Ritz bits so much that Gorth can have it." And Gorth turns around. Yes, I truly love Ritz bits. Well, that worked out well. Cool. Starts All eating right. Ritz bits. I trust him. Ah, oh, poor, poor Paris. I guess he probably actually wanted a Ritz bit, but has to lie about it. Dang. <laughs> huh. Uh, so, I mean, we're here in fraud. Obviously, you're some sort of, you know, physical representation in, in some... To some extent, no, but no, not at all. We're trying, you know, we actually have an appointment with uh, Mr. Hill said, and uh, and we are running late. Go ahead and give me a deception check. Nat 20. Yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> Freaking suck it, Gorth. <laughs> Why would I suck it? <laughs> <laughs> Get Paris to explain it. Uh, you see, Paris uh, looks at you guys. You all work for Ilsaid. Well, we don't work for him. We just have an appointment with him. We have uh, something to discuss with Ilsaid. But we made the appointment, so he's expecting us, and we are running late. And yeah. I, I mean, egg on our face, right? Oh, I yeah. lay an egg. <laughs> I'm still a bird. <laughs> you see, Paris goes, Well, if you want to see Il said, mm. you got to get down to the ninth layer of hell. Uh, and you see, Gorth turns and goes, Il said is here in fraud, you little scrawny. Losers. Which which what? one of us are you talking to? Why did you, you get say mean losers? all of a sudden? He's just looking straight at Balnor. What is he? Who? It's just just brutal like truth. Hard, what like mean? brutal truth is. I mean, that was just an insult. You know, you didn't have to editorialize <laughs> yeah. with the. Well, then if if Ilsed is here, we would love an introduction. Ilsed's not here. Yes, have, like, he is. Do y'all have like tiny water bottles or something that you give before meeting? We do. Yeah, we I'd don't. Well, okay. Can, I, can yeah. we just do a quick, you know, riddle check here? Just do a quick riddle test. Um, Paris. Yes. Does Gorth lie? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Gorth. Yes. Does Paris tell the truth? No. Okay, now I'm personally confused. <laughs> <laughs> I know that it's Hardwell's in that. having a seizure. <laughs> I know I heard a story one time where there's two sphinxes, and I know that we could try and crack this, but I think it's pretty obvious Paris tells lies and Gorth tells what? the truth. No, what? But Paris, you're beautiful. I oh, love you. Oh, thank you so much. Um, I think here's it's beautiful. No, I'm not. See that? Now that's the truth. Yep. Gorth is yep. telling no, the truth. No, I'm not. Stop. See, no, the I truth hate line. it when people compliment there's, me. Stop. There's a time. He for, loves it. He freaking eats it up. There's anyway. a time for white lies, and there's a time for the truth. He's right? hot. Paris is hot. Okay. Well, you guys are really <laughs> hot. I mean, he's objectively hot. I wish I could turn my face around and make out with Paris. I, I know, but you could, like, jerk I each wish other I off. could, too. I do that thing that barbers do. I minor illusion two mirrors <laughs> so that you can look at Paris. <laughs> Paris goes, oh, my God, you're beautiful, Gorth. I also think you're beautiful. <laughs> this is healthy. This is a But only on the outside. <laughs> so, yeah, so we kind of just need... I mean, like, we are a professional enterprise here, um, Band of Boobs LLC, um, and we are, we're ready to meet with said. so if you got a waiting room or something, magazines we could read. Well, as you can see, 
there was recently a big battle here. Kind of two random wizards did I, some I, fighting. I'm so oh, sorry. Can I, Gorth, what happened? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> get yes. Wait. Gorth check on that? Yeah. <laughs> there were two wizards, but they weren't random. They were that scrawny little freak, Ill said. And who was the other freak, the other wizard? The waste case pothead known as Alanis. Never heard of her. Who won this grand battle? Gorth, O truth teller. Uh, you see, quickly turns back to Paris. Ah, uh, nobody. You know what? Um, I think it was. Yep, it was Alanis. She kicked him in the stomach, and then she <laughs> stone cold stunned him. And Ilse went down. And he was like, "Oh no, it's Gorth." Yeah. Where's Alanis? And I hold his face so he can't turn around. <laughs> okay. I'll give you a kiss. <laughs> If you tell me where a lot of I put a Ritz bit in her mouth. <laughs> I would love that. No one ever wants to kiss me. Everyone wants to kiss Paris. I'll give you Even a those Ritz personalities kiss. fucking garbage. Balnor, look away. <laughs> Hard one. Just kiss fu- Paris too. This is fucking disgusting. No. no. <laughs> distract Paris. Hard one. Distract Paris. Paris doesn't Paris. need a distraction. <laughs> I don't need a distraction. <laughs> That's he's lying. He needs a distraction. He's lying. Hey, I, need a distraction. I don't need I a distraction. <laughs> I would hate it if he kissed me. <laughs> this is absurd. I think he's Hard, I hold up my orb of recording. Make sure you kiss it and make sure the orb gets it. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this for? <laughs> Lots of people. Not me exclusively. Several others. All right. There's no need right. for the orb to record it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see, Gorth goes. Alanis and Ilsid were doing battle. Ilsid tried to get through to her and eventually did. And they stopped fighting. Ilsid and Alanis are now working together. And you hear Paris turns around and goes, Alanis and Ilsid are working together. Hmm. So what? this is one of those contradictions, a complicated situation where it's both true and untrue that they're working together. Yeah, maybe it's hard to establish what? a binary. No, that's I not... have another seizure. <laughs> Paris, honestly, yeah. I, I liked you at first. I really... Am I, am I going to make out with, with him? <laughs> I think that'd be better than you saying words, yeah. All right, We're... real quick, y'all. Should we just play Spin the Bottle? Uh, minus Beverly. <laughs> Beverly, you're not. You're too young. Yeah, I, I'm recording. <laughs> minus me because I don't want to. I'm the cameraman. You see Gorth turns around. Everyone stop making this guy kiss people. It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> we have nothing to gain from it. <laughs> you don't. Put, this, put the fucking re- orb of recording away. Gorth, where did Alanis and Ilsed go? He... Motions for you to follow him. Takes off into the sky. Um, I <laughs> I ask if I can ride on Gorth and Paris' back. As um, Paris and Gorth start to fly away, they're kind of low flying so you can follow them. Paris goes, oh no, see, we actually aren't strong enough. Oh no. Um, turns around, he thinks you guys are fat. <laughs> Excuse me? He's right, he's right about one of us. The armor. Babe, the armor. you could probably fly on me. Oh, okay. I try and fly on Moonshine. <laughs> I'm a falcon. Can you fly on me? <laughs> can no. I <laughs> Absolutely not. Can I, not. Wait, can I do like a Sonic and Tails? No. Where like I hang from my I'm going to keep trying. So we're so our speed is reduced by how you're, frequently I You're like Link holding up a chicken. Uh, <laughs> so we're gliding. Be- Beverly throwing, just like running with a <laughs> cuckoo. Flapping. <laughs> bird in his hands you guys follow paris and uh gorth and they take you to the center of um this ruined city the center of these ruins you see that there are a bunch of fallen statues uh, and you see a big dome building that has collapsed in on itself uh there is a set of stairs that leads below the collapsed building under the rubble creating a sort of cave and you see Paris turns to you and goes, I wish you all good luck. And then flies off. Uh, oh, no, 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 no. He can't Go, fly off. Uh, Gorth. Gorth. Gorth, 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 what? What do, you, what do you have to say about this? Gorth turns around. I hope you guys die. 
Fair enough. Why? I made y'all a nest. We gave you so many Ritz bits. That's just flapping away in the distance. <laughs> you don't deserve to get kissed by hard one. But I'll do it now if you come back and rescue us. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're flying back. Just flying away. Oh, that's what that meant. Prude. <laughs> uh, so we are in this dome. You are outside. You are in the like city ruins. You see they brought you to this like staircase. Hmm. Everybody go ahead and give me perception checks. That's probably a good idea. Net 20 again. Wow. Ooh. I can't believe I'm getting these all fucking now. <laughs> They're on like stuff that doesn't actually make a difference. Moonshine. It's going to make a difference. Oh. It does make a difference. You sense a great bit of magic coming from this cave mm -hmm. um, with a nat 20. It seems like Alanis has set up her magnificent mansion here. You feel like that there is a barrier and then magic beyond it. Your uh, GPS getting a ping? We near the address? Yeah, Alanis is here. Let's talk to her. Yeah. Yeah. Those, uh, that Manticore, despite being beautiful, was uh, not really very trustworthy. Even, you know, even Gorth didn't seem that trustworthy. I think Gorth was trustworthy, although uh, the way he ended things really left a sour yeah. taste. Beverly is like still trying to figure out the deeper riddles. Like I think like maybe if like he tells two truths, then the other one can lie. I think there might be exceptions. I think you know, he's... he was honest. He just really honestly wants us to die for whatever reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we are in hell. We are in hell. Yeah. When in hell, All right. kill us. Yeah. Uh, so I guess yeah. Let's go towards uh, mm -hmm. Alanis. Sweet. So you guys. Descend the stairs, you enter the cave, and see that inside is a mansion. Um, the same one that you were in when you met Alanis in the Feywild. Uh, you see that it is two stories tall, lined with books. Uh, a balcony on the second floor overlooks the floor below. Down on the first floor, books are scattered everywhere. You see the desks are covered with papers. There are diagrams, pictures, and letters, and uh, uh, all up on the board on the wall. It looks like a conspiracy theorist, essentially. Um, you even see the white circlet that um, was seemingly uh, controlling her when she blew up the astral keep is just discarded to the side um, on one of the couches. Um, do we see the pool that she was using to show us visions before anywhere? It is. It is in like the center of the room. And in fact, you see that she is there meditating, looking into it. Oh. I kick something over. <laughs> you kick something over? <laughs> yeah. You kick into like a bookcase, a bunch of books fall down. And Whoops. you see Alanis is faced away from you guys and she's quite perceptive so she should have heard you coming in but she must be super distracted by something because mm -hmm. as soon as you kick the books over she jolts forward kind of with a start she turns around slowly sees you guys um you see uh she's wearing her normal kind of adventuring gear she's got her purple cloak on her goggles are all to the side though her hair looks all frayed she looks like she's been up for a while uh and you see she turns around kind of slowly stands up and holds her hands up in sort of a conciliatory way and goes, hey guys, I guess I probably owe you a few explanations. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be nice. I'd say. Specifically to you, hard one? Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let me start off by saying I was never under Theala's control. Did she think? You were under her control? She did. That circlet that she used to control me, you see she points over to the circlet that's um, discarded like off uh, on like one of the chairs near her desk. She goes, I was prepared for that. Yeah, you remember she used one on me in one of the possible futures that I showed you. Yeah. So this time when she captured me, I acted the part of a charmed person, but I'd actually prepared an item to trigger a counter spell at the moment it went on my head. I figured she would use me to try to perform some great act of violence, and she did. She wanted me to slaughter everyone at the Astral Keep, so I... Did? Did anyone die? I don't know. I got blown into space. Yeah, we you, haven't really had an accurate body count just yet. Yeah. Right. Well, I did blow everyone into space. I did do that. Mm -hmm. It's better than what you could have done. I realize that. Yeah. 
And all in all, a pretty good prank on Theala, to be honest. Yeah, actually, can I see that circlet? Uh, yes, yeah, she um, walks over. She hands you the circlet. Can I do like, I just want to like hold mm. it and I don't know. Um, yeah, go ahead and do, I guess, an arcana check on it. 18. 18? Plus zero, but that doesn't matter when you're rolling 18. <laughs> you look at up. it. It seems to be dispelled now. And um, you see Alana sees you inspecting it, and she goes, oh, what that does is it kind of casts a sustained dominate person spell. So but that now is it, it's it dispelled? It has been dispelled, yeah. So mm. now it's nothing. Now it's just a pretty tiara. I could re-enchant it. It kind of goes against my whole thing. Well, let's not get uh, sidestepped here. Uh, yeah, we, let me There's let me a part two to our questions. In. Okay, so I pretended... To be under Theala's influence, Mm -hmm. I figured if she had me with her, I would be her weapon, and that way I could make sure that as few people got hurt as possible. So Mm -hmm. I destroyed the Astral Keep, but I saved everyone as far as I know. I gotta be honest, Alanis, it is a relief to find out that you are not either under her control or willingly working with her. No, I hate Theala. A lot. Okay, so she Same. is bad. Yeah, no, we got. She's I got super pretty, bad. I got pretty worked up there for a little bit. I'm sorry I didn't give you the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> uh, no, it's okay. I've been super shady. It's been. We're gonna. After all this is done, we gotta sit around and smoke a bowl sometimes because <laughs> there's a lot of screwed up stuff going on. Anyway, yeah. I knew that after the explosion at the Astral Keep, Theala would think that I had done what she set out for me to do, and while she was distracted. I headed into the nine hells to try to confront Ilsed. So that's what you came here to do. Why did you, why do you feel the need to confront Ilsed? I'm just asking because I I don't know your intentions. I don't I don't even know my own feelings about any of this sometimes. With the information that I knew, I thought I could maybe beat him. And I also thought that if you all just happen to scry on me and want to follow me into hell, that wouldn't be uninvited. Well, here we Dang. are. What you... happened when you fought Ilset? Because last we heard, we were talking to a beautiful and ugly manicor, and they both said you guys were working together. Right. Yeah. So things are super complicated. And I also want to address one other thing. I feel like I owe you an explanation, Beverly. Sure. Spill. I did know about your father's deal. He told me while we were in the Feywild, he swore me to secrecy. You know how deals are in the Feywild. I mean, I'm sure I could have tried to come up with some sneaky way to tell you, but if I could be perfectly honest, I did think it had a good chance of working. If you had known about it, you might have confronted him before you were ready. You wouldn't have had the backup of the devils at Queen Ezra's Tower. The Green Knights would be lost. You guys might be dead. So I'm sorry for taking that choice out of your hands. I'm sorry for making that choice for you. I won't say it doesn't sting, but you've seen more futures than we could ever know. So if that's what you thought was best, then I'll have to trust you. But dang, man, that's cold. Yeah, it's kind of against my whole thing. I like to let other people make their own decisions, but your dad was insistent that you could stop him, and I thought he was right. For what it's worth, he was, and... That's its own kind of punishment, but we're here now, and it seems like you and Ilset had kind of a bit of a showdown. What what happened? Yeah, so here's the thing. You see she um, um, puts her hair back in a bun. It's all, like, up and crazy right now, and um, you see her eyes are bloodshot. You don't know if that's from her smoking or her just kind of being stressed out. Um, You see she walks over to this kind of conspiracy wall that she has, and I she like goes, down with the place. <laughs> yeah, okay, so here's the next thing we need to talk about, guys. Oh, that guys. a lot of thread. Yeah, Ilsed isn't Ilsed. You see, she points to the board, and it's just written across a bunch of papers. Ah. Uh, so that's what that says. And you see, hmm. she, she rips a huge bong. <laughs> it just blows okay. your fucking mind. Okay, okay. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't, when you don't understand what it means, walk my hand. Ilsed isn't Ilsed. Oh, then right? That's, like A is A. 
Yeah. What? Are you saying that he goes by his middle name or something like that? Or like... Not exactly. Okay. So there are greater powers at work here than just a rogue necromancer. We're in more trouble than I had originally thought. Um, <gasps> Good. I was, I was afraid this was getting too easy. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Maybe he can explain it better. Huh? Uh, well, you see well. emerging huh? from the board in a puff of ghostly smoke is ill said in the form of a specter. He bears the likeness of the elven ill said, uh, this pale, uh, skinny necromancer with long, stringy white hair, but he is a ghost. And you see, he says, uh, Gust of wind. <laughs> ah, ah, why? <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm ill said. I'm sure you've heard some bad things about me. Yeah, yeah, you look different in the chat. Yeah, does he does he sound like the ill said that we talked to? Yeah. Yeah, we've talked before. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's true. Mm, I'm pretty sure we called you Miss Roselle a bunch. Yeah, who the hell did we troll? Yeah, we trolled <laughs> you. Oh, okay, I see. You, We trolled you, you're embarrassed, now you're pretending that you weren't there. Uh, you see, as you guys are like going in on Ilsed, Alanis kind of stands between you guys and goes... Listen to him, okay? Hear him out, because I thought the same thing. I figured, hey, we're on fraud. Everybody's lying down here, right? We get into this crazy fight, but the more he talked, the more I kind of realized what he was saying made sense. Um, and finally, I used magic to ensure that he was telling the truth, and he's he's being honest. There's greater forces of fraud at work here. So did you transform Ilsed into this ghost or is his body somewhere else? Yeah, Ilsed, take the floor. You see <laughs> Ilsed hovers over the magic projection bowl that Alanis used to share um, Balnor's story. Um, not like a pot bowl, like a big bowl. <laughs> That's also a pot bowl for her. <laughs> and you see uh, Ilsed goes... Perhaps it would be easier if I showed you. Sure, yeah. Uh, Can I do like a perception check on this entire situation? Sure, is yeah. Is Alanis Alanis? If Ilsed isn't Ilsed, maybe Alanis isn't Alanis. Mm. You see, I'm Alanis gonna, is like... super high. She goes, oh, shit. <laughs> what? Yeah, why don't you uh, open yourself up and let me do a she, perception she check She casts on detect you. magic on herself. Okay, yeah, it seems normal. But can we trust anything down here? That's a good call. Right? Um, Dang. Yeah. I did blow up the astral keep. Who am I, right? Yeah, right. Jesus. What? Should we put that on the board? I'm putting that on the board. All right, yeah. Yeah, you're Alana's a suspect astral now. Keep. <laughs> <laughs> We're out of red thread. Do you have any green thread? We're going to need a separate thread. Yeah, yeah, you see she did have a picture of herself up there, but she had X'd it out, and she's like, I guess I got to put myself back up on the suspects. <laughs> yeah, that, I think that's for the best. I got a 25 on my perception. It would be an insight, probably. Uh, that's a 21 on my insight. They appear to be... Telling the truth. You can cast Detect Magic or Zone of Truth or something if you'd like. Um, can I just do like a divine sense? You get the sense that this ghost of Ilsed is evil mm -hmm. in the way that like being evil is almost the trait of a monster. Like he is bound to a level of hell. And right. that makes his spirit the same kind of stink as a devil or yeah. an evil being. Anti-radiant energy. Exactly. Gotcha. Yeah. So like if a, you know, a super mean businessman isn't going to ra radiate evil energy, mm -hmm. this ill said does have some evil energy, certainly. Sure. So uh, still, still a Jamoke, but maybe not the prime Jamoke. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you kind of um, don't know. He's a ghost in hell, so he's not he's not great. Okay. All right. All right. We'll watch your weird movie. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. I'm in. I get my milk back out. Yeah. <laughs> you got any popcorn in there that's not covered in tuna? Uh, let me look. Uh, well, oh, my God. There's two hounds in here. Oh. He pulls out <laughs> Salak, who's got his arms chopped off and just suffocated. And then um, Elix was in there with the whip tied around him. Elix ate Whoa. half a tuna sandwich. Uh. <laughs> You he, sick fuck. This is <laughs> disgusting. This is the last thing he did. He couldn't breathe and he was eating tuna. <laughs> but Balnor, wouldn't you do the same? Uh, what a way to go. <laughs> I'll give him a good burial. <laughs> so uh, um, you guys see this um, spectral form of Ilsed flies into the bowl and you see an image. You see the image of Gladeholm University 
well over 100 years ago. Uh, strangely, it looks more futuristic. The glowing spheres that light the cobblestone streets of the university uh, are floating. Um, now they're kind of set up like gas lamps. It's one of those things where technology or fashion goes through a cycle where something is new, so they're like, we need to make this look cool and robotic. And yeah. later they're like, no, 80s fashion was cool. Mm. Let's bring back crew neck sweatshirts. Like mm. how all art buildings on colleges from the 70s are just big, ugly concrete bricks. Yes, exactly. Mm. Cool. So this is at like an ugly time before oh. <laughs> it got pretty again, and it used okay. to be pretty, if that okay. makes sense. Mm -hmm. So you guys see uh, various students mingling and walking over the long bridge uh, to the university. And Ilsaid begins. He goes, I was a young student at Glade Home University. I take a quick bong rip. <laughs> feels yeah, like it's going to be a long movie. Yeah, you should I've have, crossed my fingers. Please don't be hot. You Please don't be hot. Please don't be hot. Um, you see um, a hot young Ilsaid. No! <laughs> All right. Uh, you see Ilsaid goes, I was a spry 34 at the time. <laughs> And I wasn't exactly popular. <laughs> Necromancy doesn't go over super well when most of the students are more interested in learning how to fly or summoning animals. Um, you see young Ilsaid, face not quite as withdrawn, um, but still pale. His hair is white. Uh, it was always white, but it's full instead of stringy. Uh, you see he is in some type of druidic biology class. <laughs> um, there's a girl sitting next to him attempting to cast a spell on a dead plant and looking extremely upset. Ilsaid leans over, waves his hand, brings it back to life, and a beautiful rose grows out of it. Uh, you see she looks elated for a second until the rose suddenly grows thorns and starts snapping at her with like hundreds of little vicious teeth. And you see him furiously trying to like hold it back from her. Honestly, if either of y'all want to get me like a, a Valentine's Day present or a Mother's Day present, I'd actually <laughs> prefer a bouquet that attacks me. Do you want an attacking rose? Yeah, that'd be awesome. Okay, I can make that. <laughs> okay. Cool. Uh, he continues and he goes, I wasn't cool. There was, however, one necromancer who was. Oh, yeah. You see, as Ilsaid is bumbling, uh, trying to fix his mistake, a young Erdan waltzes in. Oh. Still has the messy curly hair and pins nay glasses. Uh. Bubbles? Is Bubbles there? Bubbles is not there. Huh. Didn't have Bubbles yet. Um, without looking, he waves a hand, freezing the rose into a beautiful crystalline blue. He uses a magic hand to hand it to the girl who blushes. He then duplicates it with a flick of his wrist and places it on the desk of a guy sitting across from her and he winks at both of them and they both <laughs> blush uh, and he keeps walking. Erdan goes to his seat in the back of the room and throws his legs up on the desk uh, and you see Lucanus sits next to him. Uh, you see he quickly puts his legs up to try to imitate Erdan, um, oh, but then gets heck, nervous and puts his legs back. Oh, what a bad boy. Worse. That's my dad. <laughs> and you see um, Ilsaid looks on um, at their little friendship with this kind of look of jealousy. Um, later, you see Ilsaid is out on the long bridge between the university and the city. It's a brisk day. He pulls his cloak tighter as he looks out over the ocean, deep in thought. Busy students walk by, all in big, happy groups, but Ilsaid is all by himself. Erdan impresses a group of students by bringing a dead spider back to life, um, then commanding it to weave an intricate web. Uh, and Ilsaid goes, I wanted to be like that. I wanted to be impressive. I wanted to be able to do things that other people couldn't do. And that's when I found it. Um, you see Ilsaid turns from watching Erdan and squints at a glowing red light coming from the water below. He looks around and nobody else seems to notice it. Um, later, Ilsaid is out on the cliffs. You see he casts a water breathing spell on himself and dives into the water. He swims deep, deep below the surface and eventually finds the ruins of an old wizard tower. It's all crumbled, it's broken in half. Uh, he swims in through one of the windows and finds ruined, soggy books um, and useless wands. And he also finds the source of the red light. 
a necklace. It's silver with a skinny chain and an intricate circular pendant uh, with a red jewel in the middle. You see that as soon as Ilsed touches it, he reacts with a jolt and the jewel begins to fog up with a black shadow. And Ilsed goes, the jewel, it spoke to me. I came to learn that the necklace I'd found contained the soul of a lich. A lich is a wizard who has attained immortality, usually through devilish or demonic help. Rather than having their soul as part of their body, a lich can contain their essence in an item called a phylactery. So long as the phylactery stays intact, the lich can keep coming back to life. This necklace was the lich's phylactery. He explained that he was special, that unlike a normal lich who regenerated their own body, he could transfer to a new one each time. He achieved this power through a pact with the devil Osmodius. The only catch was that once his original form perished, Osmodius would get to pick the next body. Osmodius chose an archdevil bound to the eighth layer of hell, effectively tricking the lich into eternal servitude, unless someone could find his phylactery on the material plane and help him get out. So just to be clear on what happened there, so the idea is basically that the phylactery is where his soul is, that's in this necklace, that's in this pendant. Mm -hmm. This wizard, this lich, had a body died, Osmodius picked the first body for him and picked a devil that was bound to hell. So basically mm. separated the lich from, from his phylactery so that he would be trapped in hell and have to serve him. Freaking got him. In exchange for, um, you know, getting the powers of a lich. Mm. Classic devil deal. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you see Ilside continues, classic devil deal. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. some people do outsmart the devils though. I've heard stories. <laughs> I have heard some stories. In. So the lich said that we could help each other, uh, that he could do me a favor, and all he'd need was a favor in return. I declined at first, but there soon came a day when I would need a favor. Uh, you see the gates of Gladeholm open on a rainy day. Lightning cracks in the sky and thunder rumbles as a line of somber elven warriors and mages carry these floating vessels. Uh, they almost look like caskets, um, but they are an arcane item through which um, high elves uh, use to transport bodies. Uh, you see Lucanus trailing Erdan uh, as Erdan rushes up to the caskets. Let me see them. One of the mages turns to him. Um, son, uh, you don't want to do that. Um, and Erdan is trying to, like, push past them to get into the casket. And Erdan goes, we're wizards. We have magic. Fix them. Cast Raise Dead. If you fools won't do it, I will. Um, you see he holds his hands up to do it. Um, one of the warriors grabs his wrist and he goes, son, you can't just cast Raise Dead. That spell doesn't, it doesn't restore body parts and you see Erdan looks troubled um, but then his face hardens and he goes let me see them um, the mages and guards just kind of look at each other and shrug um, Il said watches from a distance I wanted so badly to be able to help to be the hero for once um, later you see Erdan and Lucanus uh, standing over the caskets, uh, alone in a room that looks like an arcane kind of coroner's office, um, various embalming concoctions and such. It almost looks like a big kind of witch's hut. Um, yeah, I was going to say. And as Erdan reaches down to open the casket, you see Lucanus stops him. Erdan, leave them be. Erdan goes, I can fix them. You can't, Erden. No one can. Suddenly, Ilsed rounds the corner and pipes up. Actually, that's not entirely true. I, I, I know someone who who could help us, and and he just happens to owe me a favor. 
you see Ilsed holds up a gold coin with the symbol of a triangle with a circle in the middle. And Erdan scoffs, and he goes, No offense, Ilsed, but if I can't do anything about it, neither can you. And Ilsed blurts out, He's a lich! Erdan and Lucanus both look stunned. He's mastered the art of living forever. If anyone can bring someone back from the dead who isn't fit to come back, it's him. Lucanus looks horrified. He snaps at Ilsed. You spoke to a lich? Ilsed, you could be expelled. You could be thrown in the dungeons. This is madness. You see Erdan's face hardens. And he says, Try it. Erdan motions for Ilsed to join them. Ilsed looks kind of excited and walks over to the casket as Lucanus whips out his wand and presses it against Ilsed's chest. No. He turns and pleads with Erdan. Erdan, they're gone. It's over. Magic cannot heal this. Ilsed has his hands up, looks to Erdan for guidance. Erdan slaps the wand out of Lucanus's hand, then casts a hold person spell to throw him against the wall. Erdan, no! Erdan turns to Ilsed. Do it. Ilsed holds up the coin in his palm. You see it begins to glow, then melts and joins an orange arcane glow in his hand. He closes his eyes and whispers as he holds his hands over the caskets. Please, let me be able to put them back together. You see the torn apart bodies of Erdan's parents rise from the caskets, then rapidly begin reforming, healing with an orange glow around them. The boys look on in wonder as Erdan's parents float back to their feet fully intact. They are both wizards um, with curly hair. They look a lot like Erdan. The mother also wears the pince -nez glasses. Mm -hmm. Erdan rushes in to give them a hug, and they pull him in for a tight embrace when suddenly their eyes glow red and they attack. It's chaos. They just like clench his back in and try to bite at him. They're all screaming. Erdan is quickly able to pull his wand out and blasts his father back, who quickly deanimates and falls apart to the ground. As he's distracted by this horror, his mother lunges for him, but she's quickly blasted away by a fireball. You see Lucanus stands there with a smoking wand. Erdan looks at the horror scene then sneers at Ilsed, who looks on in disbelief. Erdan turns to Lucanus and immediately explodes into tears. You were right. I should have listened to you. I will listen to your counsel from now on, my friend. Lucanus um, stares forward, very serious, and looks at Ilsed. No one can know about this, that we knowingly worked with a lich... You need to make this right, Ilsed. Ilsed! Um, you see, Ilsed, still shell-shocked, just takes off and runs away. Later, we see Ilsed in his dormitory. He looks both ways down the hall before closing the door, then lights nine candles on the floor atop a circle of runes with the phylactery in the middle. He casts a spell, and a moment later, a puff of black smoke, a shadow, appears in the wardrobe mirror. Lich, you deceived me. The deal is off. And the Lich goes, Why? I brought them back together? That's not what I meant, you know that. I'm done. I don't want your power. I don't want any part of this. Oh, but you still owe me a favor. Yeah, fine. Just make it quick so you can be done with me. Oh, I'm... Afraid it won't be quick. I have great things planned for us, Ilsed. You will be the vessel that brings me to the material plane. Um, you see Ilsed, horrified, is paralyzed as shadows begin leaking from around the candles 
um, and crawling up his body, holding him in place. Il said, You wanted to be special, and you are special. It is rare to find someone stupid enough to make a deal with me, but with enough potential that I could still do something good with your body. Well done! Uh, you see the black smoke flows out of the mirror and takes a humanoid form, tilting Ilsed's face towards them with long, shadowy fingers. Ilsed stammers. What horror have I brought upon this world? I go by many names, but some call me Akarot. The shadow shoots into Ilsed's mouth, eyes, ears, nose, as his body contorts in an unnatural twist like he has a broken back before uh, he settles and stares forward. The lich, Akarot, stares at himself in the mirror, the face of Ilsed looking back at him, but with the glowing red eyes of Akarot, after a moment, the red of his eyes dies down and returns to being uh, indistinguishable from Ilsed. He smirks. Ilsed continues his story. From that moment... I was effectively dead, and my spirit came here. I can still cast spells, however, and who has more of a connection to that body than me? So I've been able to cast the scry spell and keep up with what Akarat was doing as me. Uh, you see Akarat, now posing as Il said, arrives in the same class we saw before with Erdan and Lucanus. He confidently restores the plant monster back to life. Uh, in the back of the class, Erdan struggles and Lucanus tries to help him. Ilsaid continues, Before he was bound to the Nine Hells, he was some kind of hedge wizard who wasn't allowed anywhere near the university. But as me, he could access everything. You see him at the library, taking in ancient tomes, buttering up the teachers who let him into restricted sections. He ogles the wall of relics in the Great Hall. Akarat covered his tracks by casting a modified feeble mind spell on Lucanus and Erdan, causing them to forget the event entirely. Uh, you see Ilsed's hands hovering over Erdan while he sleeps, pumping him with some kind of necrotic energy as he twists and turns like he's having a nightmare. Before long, Akarat performed a ritual to remove his essence from the pendant and put it somewhere that would grant him more influence. You see him holding out the pendant and performing a ritual. The shadowy figure, the true form of Akarat, escapes the necklace and enters the Allcaster apparatus. The reason Akarat can possess so many bodies all at once is that his very essence can reach the entire population of Gladeholm. And now that he rules hell, now that he dons Osmodius's crown, his powers have been amplified. He can make hollow bodies far, far away from Gladeholm. And worse, he is now powerful enough to inhabit the dead gods he seeks to resurrect. You see the image in the bowl gets foggy before Ilsed returns to his spectral form and joins you. Well, that movie so. was fucked up. <laughs> yeah, sorry about that, gang. Kind of a, a rough ending, but in like a good, like a No Country for Old Men way? What did you think? No, I, I really prefer like a feel-good film like that. Oh. Yeah, the effects yeah. were great. Hey, everybody. It's Emily here to talk to you about Aura Frames. Mother's Day is coming up, and some of us are looking for a way to shower the maternal figures in our life with love. Well... Look no further. Aura frames are the digital picture frames that bring all your photos and videos together in one gorgeous, high-resolution display. They're super easy to set up. They save you from the struggle of printing and framing your favorite photos, but most importantly, they help you stay connected with family that live far away. That's because you can kind of preload a bunch of pictures onto the frame, but you also get to keep adding pictures and you can invite the rest of your family to add pictures. The gifts you make mean the most. So this year, turn your family's past into the perfect Mother's Day present with a connected frame from Aura. Right now, Aura has a great deal for Mother's Day. Listeners can visit AuraFrames.com slash Papa to get up to $30 off on their best-selling frames. That's A-U-R-A frames.com slash P-A-W-P-A-W. 
Plus, listeners can get free shipping with code P-A-W-P-A-W at checkout. This deal ends on Mother's Day, May 14th, so don't wait. Terms and conditions apply. Goodbye, sweeties. Hey there, Nadpoles. This episode is brought to you by Rocket Money. Do you know how much your subscriptions really cost, folks? Well, most Americans think they spend around $80 a month on subscriptions, but the actual total is closer to around $200. Holy hell. If you don't know exactly how much you're spending every month, then you need Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions, monitors your spending, and helps you lower your bills all in one place. Over 80% of people have subscriptions that they forgot about, and chances are you're one of them. Like that Stars app just to watch that one show or that free gaming trial you never actually used. Well, Rocket Money will quickly and easily find your subscriptions for you. And for any you don't want to pay for anymore, just hit cancel and Rocket Money will cancel it for you. It's that easy. Rocket Money also helps you manage all your finances in one place and automatically categorizes your expenses so you can easily track your budget in real time and also get alerted if anything looks a little funky. Over 3 million people have used Rocket Money, saving the average person up to $720 a year. Wow. So stop throwing your money away, cancel unwanted subscriptions, and manage your expenses the easy way by going to Rocket rocketmoney.com slash pawpaw that is rocketmoney.com slash pawpaw one more time for you rocketmoney.com slash pawpaw thank you so you're saying that the Akarat we knew is Akarat Jr. you see Alanis pipes up and she goes the Akarat you knew was just an avatar essentially Akarat's prime hollow body for him on the material plane um, while he did his work in hell, his personality of a dark paladin who was obsessed with pleasing his dad was tailor made to seduce you to the power of the nine hells. Yeah, that makes sense. It, he, part he, of his thing is going. I mean, he so wanted to Akira. lure. He wanted to lure Beverly in, um, like he did Il said, and. <sighs> control eventually control his body so Akira also is the one who who left the book for maribel Akira is everything bad that has happened from the nine hells since the three of you have met primo does, big big bad bad guy if God. he was trying to steal beverly's body does that mean that he doesn't have a body right now he has a lot of bodies but he wants like a prime body. He likes good ones, yeah. Oh, so he's a collector. Oh, he's, he's a collector. A collector. Oh, yeah. okay. So it wasn't like I need this one. It well, was it like, wasn't. So here's I have the, so many cars I don't drive. It is not in vain that you destroy these hollow bodies. It does destroy them. The one that you killed was a powerful death knight that was the avatar through which he did work on the material plane. Do you mean this one? I hold up the head. <laughs> nice, dude. <laughs> <laughs> but that head is worth a lot less than we thought it was. Yeah. So. We thought this was the first place, but it's third at least. You see, um, we she, takes, hollow she takes... We it out and put some peppermints in it. That'd be fun. You know, if we ever open a restaurant. Yeah, we could use it to open bottles. Mm. Oh, when are we going to have time? We'll be dead soon. <laughs> yeah. You see, she um, takes a rip and she goes... You know, if you want to keep just thinking of him as ill said, because he's ill said to you, then it is kind of like you killed Akarat if you think about it. And ill said goes, "Whoa, whoa, hang on, everyone, relax." <laughs> okay, I don't know. Too I think soon. I can go one more round with him. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why? I okay. I I, I screwed no, up. Honestly, I uh, I'm sorry to say this to you. You are in hell and 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 being punished, but I, I feel for you. And just so you know, I had. I had an aunt who was a very, a very good person and had a similar fate to you. And we had another, another good friend that got duped into spending eternity in a shitty place. Also, yeah, yeah, it happens. We yeah, also- her shirt. I live in a gym. <laughs> I was talking about dead eye. Yeah. Oh, were you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, all right. You know what? I, I honestly go- forgot you okay. were here. Okay, so sorry, gang. Um. That that's a good question. Il said, uh, "Look at this belly chain. Um, this isn't a phylactery, is it?" Uh, I'm gonna have Alanis look at it 
and do an arcana check. You see she looks at it and she goes, I don't think so. If Akarat used the Allcaster to kind of spread his essence out, then yeah, he could have other phylacteries, but they likely would have had to have been in Glade home at the time. But that is something bigger to consider here that if Akarat used the Allcaster, then he could have Great. many phylacteries. phylacteries. Yeah. Huh. Factories of phy- phylacteries. There might be factories of <laughs> phylacteries. <laughs> so what's to say that all of us don't have a little bit of Akarat in us if he's basically just in the air, if we're just breathing in Akarat's magic. He can't inhabit you unless you are dead or you submit to him or you enter into some kind of deal. I see. The reason Akarat had what was essentially his Aaron boy avatar going around with his true name while he allowed Ilsed to take all the credit while he was quietly working away in hell was so that we would underestimate him. That's, see, now that's what is so strange is whenever you hear about someone who craves immortality, there's usually some sort of arrogance in there and they want to spread their name everywhere. Yeah, maybe he's just having fun fucking with us, watching us chase our tails. Yeah, so um, is that what he's in it for? He's not in it for, to stroke his ego. He's in it because he genuinely enjoys. Or, you know, he might be in it for the long haul because he'll stroke his ego when when this is all over. He, she she points to hard one. I think he would reveal his true name when it's too late for anyone to stop him. Yeah, it seems like he's really good at multitasking. So Ill said was kind of like a shell corporation. <laughs> shell said. <laughs> I actually have a board about shell corporations, if you guys want to look at those. Oh, you've got an entire other room. Yeah, no, that, wow. that's my conspiracy room. We go in there to freak out. Okay. <laughs> so, okay, okay. Now, I'm just trying to cover our asses here because, you know, Ill said, you are in hell. Um, yes. Hey, I'm sorry to keep repeating that. Yes, no, I'm uh, aware. Again, I, I pity you. I feel bad for you. You had to watch someone else do better with your body than you did. Okay, relax. So, I was going to say that, you know, as sort of a lonely hard. person, to have everyone suddenly kind of see me and be nice to me was great. But then you just, you razzed right. me. I am Lucanus' daughter. <laughs> oh, r- really? Yeah. Yeah, he got dirty with a high, uh, crick elf. Good for him. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he never okay. really liked me very much. <laughs> yeah. No one, no one really did, but Lucanus especially didn't. I know, I know. Uh, I mean, honestly, I don't know if it was just subjective in your side of the story, but Erdan didn't come out great in that story. You know, at least in the beginning, he rad. seemed he seemed like Erdan's super cool. That's oh, so yeah. interesting to me. I didn't get that from him. Did you like super cool? He has a he has a skeletal cat now, which I, I'd actually argue is cooler than uh, giving people frozen roses. Right? Yeah, he yeah. definitely looked cool in the film. Yes. I just I don't know. I think he, he sort of lost his groove. Yeah, yeah. Mm, and of. lost his groove for sure. Yes. Mm. So okay, just to cover our asses right now, we had a duplicitous manticore tell us from both <laughs> angles that y'all are working together, and it was both a lie and both a truth. I'm no stranger to contradiction, but why don't y'all tell me exactly how you're working together? Yeah, what's the working relationship? Yeah, and why is it both a lie and a truth to say that you're working together? Articles of incorporation. The lie there would be speaking to you knowing that you think Ilsed is the enemy here. To say that Alanis is working with Ilsed... Means that Alanis and Ilsed are both shit. Uh, Exactly. That, therefore, is a lie. Saying Alanis is working with Ilsed, and it's just that Ilsed has insight onto what Akarat is doing with his body, is a different thing, and that is the truth. (laughs) Okay, so now you guys are friends... With benefits. Whoa, benefits. that's true. Okay, <laughs> so I mean, I mean, yeah, truth, I have y'all hooked up. We because we're really we could g- if we want. Wouldn't that be nuts? <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> Alanis goes. Did anyone else see that movie? Because <laughs> do you want to hook up with that guy? I get the distinct impression that he never scored when he was alive. What? I scored all the time. Heavy scored. You, what? You did, it was you just left it out of the movie is all, so that we have to infer. <laughs> I mean, the opening scene is you failing with the right. lady, so... Yeah. I remember I did it 34 times. 
Okay, that's a very specific number. Yeah. No way, yeah. that's also my record, brother. Oh, uh, <laughs> gives you a spectral <laughs> high five. All right, this guy's good for it. <laughs> <laughs> He's telling the truth. Okay, so... I, I have one I, more very important question. Yeah, go for it. Alanis, if you tried to smoke ill said, I would if he would allow it. All right, fine. It would also fine. be more like huffing, right? Because yeah, you don't smoke huffing. smoke, you smoke dank nugs. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That is true. Uh, Beverly writes that down. <laughs> smoke dank nugs. Don't um, smoke. Yeah, Huff, Il, smoke. Ilsaid lets you guys do um, smoke rings with him, and he does lots of tricks. <laughs> and he goes, Okay. Anyway. I can't believe I spent so long hating you, man. <laughs> uh, Ilsaid, uh, Ilsaid continues, and he goes, I am trapped here on this lair. Um, so I can't help you in any major way, but I can give you information. Akarat's plan is to resurrect dead gods, inhabit them, and send them to the material plane. People will have to choose between bending the knee and making a hellish deal with him, or being killed and turned into a hollow body. Akarat seeks to control every being on the material plane, and he has the means to do it. Even if he doesn't, a clash between his gods and Theala could destroy the material plane. Do you mean gods other than the husks we saw? You see, Alanis pipes up and she goes, I can't imagine you saw these husks. He's been collecting them for a long time. <sighs> Alanis, knowing all this, is there a part of you that wonders if you should have worked with Theala? Seeing the threat that Il said, pardon me, sorry, I apologize to Il said, <laughs> that Akarat. Uh, we're going to try and reclaim your name, bud. Um, seeing the threat that Akarat holds, is there a part of you that wishes that you... Because uh, there's a part of me that's like, man, maybe we should have just gone along with Theala and then pulled a fast one on her at the end. You see, Alanis thinks about it for a second and then gives you a strong look and goes, if we worked with Theala to kill the devil then we would be the devils. My brain wow. just exploded. Wow. Right? Okay, that, yeah, you guys know what I mean? That's like some slow release good, shit that right? I took a hit yeah. of, I think. Yeah. Beverly's yeah. getting yeah. a contact high, and it's like, oh, wow. Theala, it, Theala has her reasons for doing what she's doing, but don't forget that she tried to wipe out cool. Upper Galateron. She did kill a whole bunch yeah, of people. Yeah, she killed a, a yep. ton of people. When you think about it, conviction is like the strongest blade. Did somebody you know, exhale? Do you, have, do you have a contact high? <laughs> what? I, Beverly just starts like moving around the threads on the wall. <laughs> uh, hey, Il said, so say, say we want to, you can't help us, but can we help you? Say we want to write a sequel to your weird movie. <laughs> oh, oh, if you could tell everyone, um, about the record. Tell everyone my story. Times. Tell them about the thirty-four times I did it. <laughs> Do you want me to say someone's name, or should I just leave it vague? You got to respect. Leave it yeah, super vague. Right? Yeah. Awesome. If you want to throw a name in there, just a cool name. Should okay. we check sources? Should we? No. Lucanus would probably know all the people. Mm, unlikely. Okay. We. Don't, I don't kiss and tell. Right. Except probably. in this specific Trista? instance. <laughs> yep, that was one of them. That's a hot name. Yeah. Okay. Cool. <laughs> right. So what's our play? Um, Elle said, you've been down here for a while, right? Yes. We just have been workshopping this idea about just like, do we want to close hell? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? If hell was closed, Akarat would have never been able to speak to me, and I wouldn't be here. Hell being closed hell being would closed. be awesome. Okay. How about closing hell from like second layer down? If that is possible, <laughs> I just like the do first. Do you like the, the first second layer, layer of hell? Is like super rad. Yeah, yeah, they're having a lot of fun up there. Really? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. really like, fun. Honestly, it's like demolition derby. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Meets yeah. Burning Man. It's, it's kind of fun. Could you it's just maybe like have a demolition ever... derby in the real, just material plane? Okay, maybe we could. Yeah, yeah. like recruit some what of the talent. What if you just bought a car? <laughs> It just felt like such an authentic, like at that point, we would just be kind of appropriating from the first level right. of hell. It had kind of like yes. such an authentic thing going on. Yeah, well, maybe, I, I give you my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it's like eight layers of hell and then kind of like, you know, we just raise that top layer right up to the surface. Are you yeah. the only person on this layer? 
I think that um, perhaps um, people will um, start popping back up in about 24 hours or so. We're kind of in, in eternal damnation, and uh, sure. you know we'll pop back up. If one of you could banish me or something, though, that'd be wonderful. Do you want to be banished? Do you want to live in hell? No, I've gotten a taste of it, and it seems bad. Super so, bad. So why don't we just banish all the bad, irredeemable souls? You, yeah, <laughs> they. Plenty of people just don't exist. Not everyone goes to hell. So what is the purpose of hell then? For bad people to torture other bad people, <laughs> and it's bad and it sucks and it's hell. So there isn't any sort of rehabilitation aspect. The first layer Have you heard really of transformative first, justice. Who is your? <laughs> let me ask you a question. Who is your favorite person from the first layer of hell? Uh, dance chain. <laughs> Dance saw, dance saw, rip, rip chain, chain, cut buzzer. Buzzer's cutters really. You like the, you pretty, like they were fun. Buzzer's cutters. <laughs> I must say their we name like hasn't buzzer. made their name hasn't made its way down to the eighth layer of hell. Il said you have to forgive her. Yes. Um, the Crick Bible is actually just a popsicle stick with a joke written on it. Mm. Uh, they don't have much in the way of uh, of heaven and hell, so I don't think you quite understand. Like that the people here for the most part are being punished. Well, I understood it was punishment, but I didn't. I don't know. I'm I'm trying to make an educated decision. Yeah, Did you feel as though you knew that the coming down the, here? Beverly? The people on the first layer seemed like a lot of them had gotten tricked, just like you will said. Like people that yeah, thank that you, didn't Harwan. deserve to be yes, there forever. That is they, true. Yeah. And that they fucked wouldn't. Up, they could repent and they could they could find peace. Right, but they wouldn't be able to be tricked if devils couldn't talk to them. Yes, hmm. but then we turn our back on everybody that that was tricked. We can't get them their soul coins. We can't get them their their way out. Do you think it's worth cleaning house as much as we can, and then I want to just sink in it. I want someone to just cast banish on this whole damn place. From two, uh. <laughs> <laughs> listen. Level yeah. one, we keep around for like bachelorette parties, <laughs> and stag weekends. Yeah. Cause like it's fun. It's New we Orleans. Make, <laughs> we make the first level into six 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 flags, <laughs> and then the rest we just cut off. Uh, you see, Alanis thinks about it, and she goes, if you had the Hellfire crown, you could probably dismiss everyone underneath you. I think you would have that power. That's a power that you shouldn't take lightly. Hey, I really am a strong believer that you only need one layer of hell. That's it. <laughs> well, let's um, also remember here, gang, that we might not, be alive to make any plans because right. Akarat is working on resurrecting gods. Yeah, I've got like eight hit points right now. I'm in no <laughs> position to be talking about how I'm going to close right. hell. So Absolutely. Everyone should definitely get some sleep before we do anything. Okay. Um, beating Akarat is going to be difficult, but it's not impossible. He needs more time to resurrect the dozen or so gods that he was planning on bringing to the material plane but our presence here has spooked him into action only about half of them are ready but he will be sending possessed gods to the material plane within the next half day or so so wow. the ritual has already begun we next should get our rest so. well before we get our rest who's hungry because we might as well have a hero's feast oh, now I, could eat. I do not like to go to bed on an empty stomach yeah oh, no. I, we do a hero's feast eat. now and you see il said goes well if you're planning on kind of banishing everyone anyway i might as well stick around and you know have a ghost meal oh you can have a ghost meal i, I could try <laughs> Okay. I'll, I, I'll do my best. All I'll right. do my best to make you a plate. <laughs> Wait, can I cast a small uh, banishment spell on the food so that it becomes ghost <laughs> yeah, food? <laughs> yeah. You can even do minor illusion to make fake food. Okay. He just quietly eats a chicken sandwich in the corner. <laughs> it's really good. Um, while Moonshine's working, I, I go over to her and I say, sorry, I didn't mean to disparage the crick. I, I just, I'm not sure what to do. And I know your opinion of the crick. And it's an opinion that a lot of people have, so it's not new. I just kind of stand by for a minute and try to think of something nice to say, and then I just walk off and uh, kind of sharpen my sword. <laughs> Pendergreens, you and uh, me. Uh. What would you do if you had that? If you had the crown, the Hellfire crown? I know you don't have. I know you're not the most ambitious man. Oh me, I'm very ambitious actually. Uh, 
If I had the Hellfire Crown, I would be like, What's up, everybody? King Pendergreen's in the house. Um, <laughs> everybody get your shit in order. I would get, like, a real cool... I have, like, black armor on, but I would get, like, black and red armor because I would be from, like, hell now, <laughs> if that makes sense. <laughs> and then I would have... Every, I would, like, make people make me the cool um, kind of fire armor. Mm-hmm. And um, those rad-ass demolition derbies that were on the first layer... They would happen on, like, the second layer, except people would also be fucking because it's, it's, like, lost. Uh, <laughs> and then basically just demolition derbies, but then I would kind of keep the theme, I think, of each one. Like, I'd be, like, demolition derby here on fraud, but then it would be, like, demolition, uh, it would be, like, bumper cars. Because <laughs> those are, like, fake cars. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I don't mean to eavesdrop, but Pendergreens was just talking super loud. And, uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Moonshine, that sounds awesome. It does, but it also it also seems like maybe the best thing is to banish the people instead of just give them a crazy despotic leader. <laughs> let's, let's not decide anything until yeah, I know. we've... Put the crown on my head, yeah. I I was gonna. Sorry, I'm talking to Moonshine now. Oh, (laughs) we're sorry. Yeah, still here. It's crazy. I'm realizing that now he hears everything. Yeah, (laughs) yeah. I thought there was like like you could turn it on. Can I shake? Can I shake the belly chain? I'm gonna gonna hurl. I'm gonna hurl. Every every deep conversation, every (laughs) secret we shared, every special moment you were just there, dude. You've done it with 34 people. All right. That's awesome, Not man. <laughs> really? Yeah. How many people have you done it with, Ben DeGreen? 35. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the end of next the, week, we all right? We are fraud, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, Moonshine. That was pretty convincing. Yeah, I don't know what that means, but... <laughs> 35 is a really solid, respectable, yet believable yeah. number. Yeah, yeah. Ben DeGreen, you are such a weirdo, but you are actually quite comforting. Oh, thanks, you know... Try to be. <laughs> all right, all right, y'all. Heroes, be- heroes, beast. I set out the bu- uh, like little buffet trays. <laughs> I <laughs> tried to put a tiny chicken. little Delicious lights under them. <laughs> I tried to put a chicken wing in uh, Moonshine's um, belly chain. Oh, thanks. He could zap into the belly chain. <laughs> a, b- a bone spits out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if the bone doesn't get spit out. You know he ate the bone. <laughs> I didn't eat the bone. Just so everyone knows. <laughs> uh, okay, we have a we have a trash out here. We can toss oh, this. Oh yeah, <laughs> no, I actually is, got a trash in here. This is a different bone. <laughs> what? <laughs> no, I didn't eat the bone. Why would I eat the bone? No one's Bones saying, don't even taste that good. No one's saying you ate the bone. But <laughs> you're... Yeah, you know what? Actually, Ben Griggs, I was no. gonna make a stock. Can I have the bone back? Um, <laughs> this is a paper mache <laughs> bone. Oh, no, I'm No, I just gotta fish it out of the trash, which is right there. Oh. oh. <laughs> He ate the bone all the time. I throw in another bone in there for him. <laughs> uh, you get back half of that bone. I think this is the first one. Huh? <laughs> uh, all right. Um, yeah, dish up. I dish up to everyone. Sweet. Um, you dish up the hero's feast. I think Ever- part of the mm. hero's feast is I have to serve it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Moonshine serves everyone. So hospitable. I make yeah. everyone a what is it macrobiotic or what is it when you when you have like the pr- correct correct nutrients macronutrient okay yeah, whatever sure. <laughs> I dish everyone their macros. <laughs> uh, you yeah. dish out Yummy. a hero's feast to everyone. I could snack on some max. <laughs> <laughs> As you guys are eating, Alanis uh, talks to you guys and she goes, "No, it's good that we didn't work with Theala because Theala and." Akarat can't clash. That could destroy the plane. We're the only people that can stop this. So we have to stop them one at a time. We have to stop Akarat. Then we have to stop the Allah. We I can't let so, them yeah. face each other. Hmm. Do you think that the Allah is stronger than Akarat? If the Allah and Akarat were to like 1v1... Theala would win if Akarat's plan goes off without a hitch. Akarat will be stronger. Here's the thing about Akarat, though. So, just because he might have a bunch of different phylacteries, he might be—he's a phylactery. Factory. He's a—he's a phylactery factory. He's a Flander and phylactery. <laughs> Doesn't mean that he's forever powerful. If we can stop this body, 
if we can unseat him from being the king of hell, he'll lose all that power. If we can stop these gods from coming back, then he's just some asshole that lives in a bunch of necklaces. <laughs> Hey, I, mean, I, I plug, I plug, um... <laughs> actually, that's super offensive to people who live in belly chains and necklaces. There's actually a lot of people who... It's a fabulous lifestyle, to be sure. Yeah. All right, so... Anyway, I gotta go back to eating bones. I mean, not eating bones. <laughs> it's just, at this point, we all know you ate the bones. I need to take out the garbage, because it's full of bones. <laughs> Does a little garbage get thrown out of the belly chain? Yeah. <laughs> are there any bones it's, it's in it? full of packing peanuts. These are, these are Don't wood. Don't look in the bag. You painted wood. Don't Why? look in the bag. Why are you going through garbage, you freak? It's a lot of intricate You're bones. You're the weird you... one. Okay, so, Alanis, do you know where Akarat is? It's on the ninth layer of hell. How and do we get there? do you know how to get there? With this ritual being underway, Akarat will be distracted enough that I can overcome any block he has and teleport us there. It won't be exact. I won't be able to sneak around, but I can get us to the ninth layer of hell. This ritual must take a lot of concentration. Yes. So if we can at least distract him and engage him, he won't be able to cast it while we're fighting, hopefully. You see Ilsed pipes up and he goes... He has a lot of help. Oh, you're in my stomach. Yes, oh, gosh. sorry. <laughs> yes, I was trying to. Um, I was trying to eat the ghost meal. I was being polite. It didn't taste like anything. <laughs> sorry. I thought maybe if I went into your stomach and try to eat sort of your digested food, oh. ask permission first. But sorry cool. about Polite that. Idea. Yeah, right on. Um, <laughs> yes, um, he has a lot of help. There will be mages up there, other hollow bodies helping him summon these dead gods. All right. Well, All right. got our hands full. Yeah. I guess maybe we'll get a good night's sleep and then... Yeah, just a wink. I only need four to eight hours. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ten, hard one so to just like a normal... Now. So Trans on average, like six? I mean, at least... Yeah, I'll, I can transfer four, but I tend to err on the side of six yeah. to eight. It trends towards eight. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if you were to just four. sleep for four hours, would you feel okay? I wouldn't be myself. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe you wouldn't like get your HP back or any of your stuff? Honestly, I haven't really, I have, it hasn't come up because uh, we travel with, you know, other people that need eight. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Yeah. I know what that's like. I know he what that's like. Pop -pop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Papa's already asleep. <laughs> Papa missed the whole thing with Ilset. He wakes up, he starts yapping at Ilset. <laughs> 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 so you guys all go to bed for the night. Alanis shows you to the same room you guys had used that other time. You guys all get in one big bed. And in the morning, you are set to face off against Akarat, Ilsed, Akarat, Ilsed, a.k.a. Akarat. Mm -hmm. Ilsed is not Ilsed. Ilsa yeah. is not Ilsa. Ilsa Ilsa. is not Ilsa. No. Alanis is Alanis. <laughs> Alanis is Alanis and Akarat. Pa, pa, Although there were, question, Akarat there were question marks next to it on the board now. Papa pa is not Akarat. Rear? <laughs> Papa's high? Rear? <laughs> I prepared note cards for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be kind of hard to sleep tonight. Yeah. I'm already passed out. <laughs> <laughs> hard on his snoring. Oh, wow. <laughs> A lot's been happening. You okay, Balnor? I'm sorry we lost you. Oh, no. That wasn't your... I lost you guys, too. Mm -hmm. Thanks for yeah, that's coming true. for me. I couldn't... Uh, I'm not um, I'm not much good on my own. Oh, don't say that. Hey, I'm a good member of the team, you know? Okay. We're okay. not a team without you. No one's talking down on themselves right now. Yeah. Okay, you just had a you got a hero's feast in your belly. You think that you think I let just anyone eat a hero's feast? No, oh, heroes right. in the you're title. Right. All right, I'm the hounds. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Starts barking and then immediately yeah. fall, falls asleep and farts. <laughs> <laughs> in my sleep, I put my arm around Balnor. Yeah. <laughs> Hardwin and Balnor just spooning and farting, <laughs> loudly snoring, and Papa's with them. <laughs> Papa. Damn, what did I put in that hero speech? <laughs> <laughs> um, it could yeah. be just fine. I'll trance. I'll go into a trance. Moonshine goes into a trance. Um, I stay up a bit, and I write a little apology letter for my <laughs> harsh words uh, to Moonshine. <laughs> um, I, I try to say that I'm feeling a lot of things, uh, but feeling 
scorn or anger towards moonshine is never one of them and i'm deeply sorry uh and i hope you enjoy reading this letter as much as i enjoyed writing it i love you moonshine and I slip it in her overall bib, so she'll find it later. Hey, yeah, Moonshine, um, you... I'll wake up. <laughs> I'll read it. Because you wake up four hours before me, so yeah. I know you'll read it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and the, I take... the boys are uh, snoring and farting. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you find this note in your bib. I read it, and uh, I guess I could I could try to write a note back. Oh, oh. yeah. Oh. I, th- <laughs> I think you can fully oh. write. Uh, you can fully write a note. I don't know if you know them fancy words yet, but... I think I say, I understand, young Bev. <laughs> <laughs> I wake up and I'm like, oh, it's just like when I would get letters from the pin pal fairy. <laughs> uh, and I wink at Moonshine. And I say, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I definitely help her make breakfast in the morning. <laughs> yeah, you guys um, wake up the next morning. Uh, you guys uh, go down to um, the little sitting area that Alanis has. You see she comes out of her room. She's all geared up, got her purple cloak on um, and her goggles. And uh, she says to you, is everyone ready for this? I'm going to teleport us to the ninth level of hell. Uh, I'll be ready in about 10 minutes. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, you know what? Why not throw a couple buffs on? (laughs) Do you have any kind of inspiring speech you'd like to give us? I would love to give a little inspiring speech if there's time. While Bev is doing this, I'm handing out good berries. Okay. So we'll have them wonders on us. Bev also has his book. Do you want to do anything with your book? Yes, thank you for reminding me. Um, So as a 14th level, uh, that means I get 70 hit points to dispense uh, with touch hands. Um, So I guess, you know what? I'll just split it even. I'll do 35 on the book. Okay. Um, and now all of us have, actually, I don't need any good berries because I can heal Bev kind of, well, Bev might end up using a bunch of spells. So I'm going to give Bev two good berries, Balnor two good berries, Hard One two good berries, Papa two good berries. Okay. Yeah. Um, and for my inspiring speech as an inspiring leader, uh, I go over <laughs> to, I go over to Alanis' uh, conspiracy board. Yeah. <laughs> And I take down everything other than the pictures of us, and I connect them all with threads, and I write, we got this, in the middle. <laughs> you see, Alanis comes back, you hear a toilet flush, and she goes back, and she goes, oh, oh, fuck. Oh, I've worked so long on those. Oh, it's okay, I copied it. Oh, oh thank God. <laughs> <laughs> I actually cleaned it up a little bit. It turns out that um, a stunt bug was behind it all. <laughs> what? <laughs> she teleports away, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Comes back with stunk bugs corpse. <laughs> oh no! Um, so you guys uh, are all inspired. You guys all had this hero's feast. You see, Alanis looks at everyone. So everyone made their preparations. Are we good to go. I tie a headband around my my head. Balnor also now ties a headband around his head. Papa also ties a headband. I tie a headband around my head. <laughs> I ask Ilset if I can have some of his smoke, uh, and I put it under my eyes as a gray knight ritual. Actually, uh, he marks you. Can I wear the circlet? Um, yeah. Just for fun. <laughs> yeah, he put on he put on the white circlet. <laughs> Looks really good on you. Oh. Everyone, just tell Akarat that I'm like this hell beast that you that y'all like tamed with a circlet. Awesome, but just remember <laughs> when we go up, if we ever go up, it comes off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and you see, uh, Il said goes, thank you for your. Sympathy and your kind words. Uh, if you do become the king or the queen or the whatever of hell, um, please, please banish me. It is so bad here. It's mostly boring, but then also bad when the devils are here and they just hit you with things. Oh. One time I just got like, like spiked into a tree. Just a dude took a nail. I thought just, you were, you're not the boss on this level. Oh no, I'm no, not at all. Oh man, I'm yeah. so sorry to hear yeah. that. Yeah. It's my hope that it is my hope that if we are so privileged to uh obtain the crown that whoever wears it will banish everyone. Right. And remember, 34 is how many people y'all laying with. Okay. Right. Yeah. Also the number of extra hit points we get. <laughs> Correct. Yes. Whoa, look wow. at that. One for each time. Yeah. <laughs> 
I don't. I don't know if there's anything uh, stronger as a confirmation than yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. I gotta say, I was just a divine before, confirmation. I we're on the level of fraud, but you know, what? I just believe you now. <laughs> Good for you. I stopped counting pretty quick, but you really committed. <laughs> oh no, I lost count too after 34. Yeah, that was <laughs> me too. Would, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, see you later. <laughs> Bye, that? You you want me to bring along any message to uh, Lucanus or Erdan? If I again am so privileged as to make it out of here. Yes. Um. Tell them I'm sorry for all the trouble I've caused with my foolishness. Tell Lucanus that he was right. Okay. Thirty-four. Thirty-four, <laughs> and also yeah. thirty-four. I'll just say the number thirty-four. It fades away. I'll just say the number thirty-four. Sure. <laughs> uh, you see, Alanis reaches her hands around you guys, and whoosh, you all disappear, and are teleported to the ninth layer of hell, treachery. And that's what no. we're oh. Oh. Yeah. We're all yeah. buff. Yeah. We're yeah. ready. Oh, to God, Sorry, put away your fucking character sheet. No, no I got it out. Put it away. Don't make so us stop playing. Sorry. <laughs> so much HP. Guys, if you want to uh, hear us talk about the show, if you want to hear my players complain at me, <laughs> um, go on over to patreon.com slash nadpod. That's N-A-D-D-P-O-D. Don't sing yet. I want to apologize to anyone I cough throughout this. I'm so sorry <laughs> if any a- of them made it into the edit. I apologize to you listeners. We're going to be releasing the all coughing mix <laughs> Of the Patreon, <laughs> if you want to hear the coughs at uh, new, highest volume, it's a new tier. It's a thousand dollars a month. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it goes to buy Emily Robitussin. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, we got some things to plug. Emily and I are playing D and D on Twitch with Dimension Twenty. Um, check out uh, Dropout's Twitch channel. Watch me and Em play um, Fantasy High Season Two with Brennan Lee Mulligan and Siobhan Thompson and a bunch of fun people from College Humor and from Nad Pod and, and Mavericks. From, yeah, and Mavericks. Hell yeah, two pro gamers, and I'm I missed. I feel so blessed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Caldo, what do you got? Um, I would like to plug our P.O. Box, 1920 Hillhurst Avenue, number 222, Los Feliz, California, 90027. Uh, this week, we had a bunch of amazing packages get sent to us. I'm going to shout them out right now. They are also great. Um, ben A. from At Foamcaster Radio and Michael from Legato Mods uh, made us a custom Old Cobb Blunderbuss. Mm, thank you very much. Uh, it's great. <laughs> um, I did open it at the post office, uh, and I got some weird looks because I was yeah. basically just opening what looked like a firearm in a government building. Um, don't do that. <laughs> But thank you. It's really fucking cool. We really appreciate it. Uh, Damien and Bridget sent us an Ohio Pawpaw Festival poster. Oh, it's so cool. It's I guess it's a, a festival to celebrate the fruit and also yeah. the possum. It's real serendipitous. Wow. Yeah. I think we should do a show at the next festival. Oh, my God. <laughs> I would love. Absolutely. Send it to Ohio. Just like come a out. real awkward outdoor, like poorly, <laughs> uh, sound, like bad sound. Our table is a hay bale. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. Uh, speaking of amazing, uh, at Derek underscore Smith 20 on Insta sent us some really cool coasters that they made. Uh, they have the sigils of the boobs uh, wood burned into them and then like a nice layer of shellac put over them. Uh, mm, they're shellac. real classy. That's you know, got shellac. Shellac. Yeah, it's a it's good enamel. It's if you don't shellac. <laughs> <laughs> Um, speaking of crafts, we also got uh, some 3D printed status condition rings for tabletop from Luke C. and Mike at ViridianGamingSupplies.com. They're so neat. They're so cool. Um, I really want to play like some actual tabletop now because yeah. they've got like, little conditionals for everything. They even included specific ones for our characters' slogans yeah. and catchphrases. Me and Murph have a uh, D&D group that we do a uh, Christmas retreat with every year. Mm, we'll bring so them we're definitely going to bring them oh. to the Christmas retreat. We can yeah. also use them for when we do the Patreon live stream. Yeah. Heck yeah. Yes, yes. Thank you so much, Luke C. Uh, got some nice notes from Brian H. And last but not least, uh, some dragon stickers and another lovely note from uh, Leah uh, in Australia. There's some good dragon stickers and the note was very heartfelt. Thank you all so much. Thank you so much for sending us stuff. Uh, it, it warms my heart. Um, 
it so much that it makes it a golden divine heart, and I hope no one steals it. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you, everyone. Jake, what do you got? Hey, brother, sister, beard oil, baby. Brother, oh, yeah, sister, yeah, yeah. Co. Com. Support my family oil business. <laughs> Buy Jake's oil. Yeah. <laughs> wow, sounds like snake's oil, huh? <laughs> That's one of our newest That's ones. That's next, yeah. It's oil for your snake. <laughs> <laughs> My snake's too dry. <laughs> if you've got a dry snake, you can cover it with Herwitz Family Oil. <laughs> it's dry. <laughs> I'm literally a snake oil salesman. <laughs> My cobra is arid. <laughs> uh, cool, guys. Follow us on Twitter, at chmurfisme, at caldiescaldwell, at eaxfords, Emily, at Jake Herwitz is Jake, and you can tweet about the show using hashtag nadpod. That's N-A-D-D-P-O-D. We are, we are, the youth of a nation. We are, we are, the youth of a nation. It's the end of the show, everybody, and that means we need to shout out our benevolent Council of Elders. And shout we will. Starting with Brad D., Dylan B., Danny P., Steelbreaker, and Spencer Caskbrew. Five extra faces on the manticore that our heroes never saw. Yeah. These faces tell white lies, okay. false truths, okay. tale, tall tales, uh-huh. open secrets, and uh-huh. passive-aggressive subtweets, respectively. Honestly, the boobs dodged a bullet. Next up, we got Beer Man Dan, Hermes W, Adam R, and Danielle the Dastardly Dame. Four hawk babies that moonshine birthed real quick while the boobs were talking to the manticore. They all hatched and are now being raised by Ilsed's ghost. Aww. Haldor Frostback, Multifor, Jordan DJ, Jeffrey S, and Cutter W, five elves from the Magic Academy that never hung out with Ilsed, Erdan, or Lucanus because they were too busy playing Ultimate Frisbee with Mavris's dad? <gasps> Dang, maybe we should have watched that flashback instead. Schubert, the Mushroom, Elena C, Mixologist Michael McD, Andrew M, and Balnor's boy, the archbishops of the new Church of Shadowfell. Their wimples are each three feet tall, have nine foot wingspans, and can cast Featherfall at will. Dusk Mother be praised. Justin I, Jacob C, Elena M, McPucks, and Earl and Kathleen L, a five headed dog that guards the secret tenth layer of hell, which is known in the infernal tongue as Akarat's Man Cave. Oh, it is a horrid place that reeks of sulfur, brimstone, and Amstel light. Yum. Damiel R, Destin C, Devin B, Jibe G, and Jostrich, the Holy Knights tasked with guarding the chaotic terror known as Binky Fiasco. Should their shields falter, the world would crumble under the weight of Binky's never-ending shenanigans. Stay strong, my brethren, stay strong. Sergio Salazar, Solomon Sakarias, De Sequani, Michael L, Sam H, and Trele the Crayfe, four elven innovators who start up the Phylactery Factory, just got major VC funding, now trapping your soul in a powerful artifact and transcending death isn't just easy, it's fun. Alucard, Jory S, Adam H, Ryan, and Aaron G, a five-headed manticore. One face tells the truth, one tells lies, and the other three mostly just quote Anchorman. Big Buck, Richard X Machina, Sam L, and Troy McSee, Ilsed's best buds at Gladeholm who would have saved him if only he'd stopped trying so desperately to be friends with Erdan. Love the ones you're with, Ilsed. A beautiful message. Dom R, Josh S, Blitzbree, Dimitri, and Caleb Storm, a gnomish architecture firm that retrofits orcish homes to resell to their gnomish clients. Tell. Basically, they just lower the shelves, cabinets, sinks, shower heads, mailboxes. Okay, it's actually a lot, but those Orcus garages fit a fleet of gnomish buggies. Nicholas C., Mike H., Matthew E., Samuel B., and Tilford G., the owners and curators of an antique jeweler that specializes in cursed jewelry called the Phylactery Factory. Gage M., Aaron C., Bohemia's fiercest L&D, TJ M., the gnome barbarian, and Trust the Traveler. The Dusk Mother Choir, who can't wait for the holidays to roll around so they can go caroling with holiday favorites like We Wish You a Merry Chris Dusk. And I'm dreaming of a gray <laughs> Chris Dusk. Anime Intellect, Zolo Dolo, Larissa J, Dylan CM, the wannabe DM, and Kelvin Noodles, a group of college whisper bards who steal people's shadows, then commit minor identity theft with them. They were also in fraud, hoping the band of boobs would interact with them so they could tell the tragic story of how they worked at a nursing home, stole the souls of the elderly who passed, then cashed their pension checks. Not sympathetic. Colton B, B Money, J, Heartless Master, and CC Lulu, the interior designers who worked tirelessly to make Alanis' magnificent mansion into a shabby, chic French country cottage with bohemian flair. But 
Alanis just keeps leaving bongs and goggles everywhere. Aiden R, Luke H, Zach C, and Jake L, four of Alanis' college friends from Glade Home University who were crashing at her magnificent mansion while she traveled through hell. Alanis loves hanging out with these guys, but they love to drop in at the most inconvenient times. They play rock band all night, and it's really hard to get a trance in. I'm Hopeless, Timmy R, Alex M, Aaron S, and Eric G. Ilsaid's gang of nerdy underdogs that he hung out with in Glade Home Together, they all claim to have slept with 170 people, which is 34 each. They all back up each other's claims, so it's airtight, and they definitely aren't lying. Sounds like the truth to me. <laughs> Lucas B, Ruben A, Jordan L, Laura S, and Jay Parker, a crew of fae sommeliers who have the superior sniffing power of the hounds, but use it for good, namely to tell the difference between a summer court pinot and an autumn court cabernet. Fae sommelier is a beautiful phrase. <clears throat> Austin C., Austin M.R., just a pissed off Tris, a.k.a. Touch It, Kaylee Elise, and Barnesinator, a cool crew of teens who hangs out with Erlen and Egwene and is encouraging Erlen to forget that two-timing Beverly. Between them, there are seven new love triangles, so everyone get ready for Bev's story to get a lot more complicated. I'm excited. Devin W., Shanoa B., Jared E., and Persephone, four dwargers who survived a gnomish uprising in Cragwater. Anytime they hear a T they reflexively throw a knife at the smallest person in the room. Reese and S, Bell and the Bard, Jackie, Eric and Andrea B, and Charo Arcadius, the uncredited producers of Ill Said's docudrama. They've really pressed him to put in a happier ending and are currently working on a special edition Blu-ray that ends with Erdan getting bubbles. Stephen C, Maxwell C, Mike K, Omri M, and Calum L, five extremely lazy knights of penance who are being whipped into shape now that Bev Sr. is there. Before, it was all hanging out all day and drinking plates of soup, but now they've got to do drills and listen to speed is about hustle, it's hell. Scott D, No Thor the Prodigy Ranger, Shane B, The Pinch, and Dan, a bunch of hollow bodies who think Akarok kind of sucks and don't obey him at all. They're currently at a rave in the Feywild. Richard C, Karen T, Curtis S, Michael C, and BJL, Hard Ones Meal Preppers. These folks fill about a thousand Tupperware containers every week full of crawfish as Hard One continues to try and bulk back up to no avail. Nikki W, Andrew B, Christopher B, B, Pete C, Ferris, and Ken of the Wizard's Tower. Jurors, in one of Pawpaw's first trials, the person Pawpaw defended was 100% guilty, but they could not deny the legal brilliance of that young possum and had to give him the W. Nicholas P, Robert F, Kevin M, Angel B, and Raul N, Balnor's jam band. When he's not fighting devils in hell, Balnor loves to plug away on the bass in his garage and pound Bud Heavies all weekend long, and this crew feels the same way. I am the Atlas, Ryan of Clan Coogan. Mary Bell, the Kitty Morphing Gnome, Esme M, and Robert, a group of teens with summer jobs at the Dwarger's Big Borger. The hours are rough and the pay sucks, but at least they get to eat all the big borgers they can handle. Jens Christian T, Joe McGee, Meta Amps, Mr. Hydroice, Jonathan from Crickfield, a few of the Dusk Mother's revenants who have fully atoned for their sins but still don't want to move out because they like living with their mom. I makes sense. Atticus C, Jonathan the Ar- Hadian Gamesmith, Tom S., and Grace G., a Crick improv team, and Old Cobb's opening act. They always crush as much as the headliner, too. The Vs may be vicious, but the crowd is anything but... And that's it for this week. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank Y'all you so to sweet. all of our Patreon subscribers, so all of our sweet. Council of Elders, and all of our listeners. You guys can head on over to our Patreon to listen to the short rest. We'll catch you guys next time. That was a HeadGum Podcast. 